everybody. Uh, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Uh, it's Monday, so uh, we're getting off to a great start. I'm excited about what's going on with Rick Wallace Enterprises, which includes the Odyssey Project and all the stuff we're doing in the black community. Uh, it's going to be an exciting but very challenging week, but I'm, I'm extremely excited about it. But anyway, this is another episode of Riding with Rick. So let's get it going. First and foremost, if you like what you hear, click the like button. If you uh, feel inspired or whatever, definitely share it so other people can be blessed by it, learn from it, whatever. And I'm not just talking about this video. I'm talking about every video on this channel. Uh, I've been giving it to you for 20 years. This is the second go around for this channel. But anyway, click that, subscribe, uh, and all that good stuff. Also, uh, if you happen to believe in the work I do in the community, show some love uh, and support the work I do by donating. With that out of the way, hey, look, uh, another current event uh, to talk about in Riding with Rick. Uh, just came across my ticker that Shikari, um, however you pronounce Shikari, Shikari Richardson has just won the 100 meters at World Track and Field Championships. Not only did she win the uh, 100 meters, but she did it in a record time. The fastest time ever at a World Championship event, 10, uh, 10.65, uh, which is the fastest recorded ever at a World Championship event. Uh, she beat the Nemesis, uh, two of my favorite sprinters, two of the most dominant sprinters of this era, Shadrika Jackson and uh, Shelly Ann Frazier Price. Um, I'm, I'm huge fans of both of them, but I'm also excited to see this young lady grow up. Um, and the reason I'm, 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 I'm excited about it is because there's so much of life in this thing. She caught so much smoke two years ago. A lot of it uh, self-induced. Uh, some of it just over, overly judgmental. But whatever the situation, she was, you know, in her immaturity out there. Now, granted, you got to think, this young lady at, what, 19, 20 years old, because I think she's 22, 23 now. So at 20, 21, something like that, very early, she literally not only qualified for the Olympics, she won the Olympic trials. So she was going in as a heavy favorite for the U.S. And her biological mom died. She decided the way to cope with that was to go out and smoke. And obviously this couldn't be an ongoing thing. Anybody that understands about marijuana because marijuana gets all up in your uh, cellular tissues and you can do positives two years after you stop if you were a heavy smoker. So she said it was a one-off thing. I tend to believe, hey man, somebody turned on, say, hey man, you need to calm down or whatever. And I think at that time, track and field was the last thing on her mind. She even said that. But what happened is she came back uh, after you know, thinking she was going to be in the same form she was before. I don't think she was mentally ready. She definitely wasn't physically ready. She did some very poor showings and she didn't respond to the criticism. The one thing you have to learn when you're at the top of your game, uh, you're trying to be at the top of your game. When you're trying to do something beyond what the average person has done, it comes with criticism. It normally comes from criticism for people who can't do what you do. Uh, one of the things I had to learn in doing all things, whether it was in sports, whether it's in business or whatever, I had to learn that vast majority of the people who were going to be evaluating me couldn't do what I did. And that I had to be okay with them doing that, knowing that that's what they do, whether they are professionals and they get paid to do it or whether it's just in their personality to critique. And one of the things you'll never sit up and see me do is I have my idea of who the best at this is. I have my idea of who are my favorite players in whatever sport and events and all that stuff. You'll never hear me breaking down somebody, calling somebody sorry, saying they're a bust or whatever, because if we're talking about them, they're in a league where exceptional people play and all the elite make it. So they might not be the best or they may not have uh, lived up to the expectations people set for them. Because you got to remember, anytime somebody goes in the league and people talk about a bus, they didn't come in and say, I'm going to be the best player in this draft. People evaluated them based off of their play and based off what they saw and said it, and they didn't live up to it. But if you in the league and you made it and you played a number of years, big ups to you, whatever league that is. So 
I understand this, but at 21, she didn't. And she started firing back, and then the performances weren't lining up with the bumping. And again, she had to learn. And so she had to sit down and she had to get her head straight. And what, I, what, I'm, what, what I'm proud of, you know, uh, what I'm proud of, uh, I'm more excited about her being a Texas than Texan uh, coming out of Dallas, even though I'm from Houston and there's all this bump up going. Um, you know, uh, I'm excited about her being from Dallas more than representing the U.S. And that's just me. Uh, you know, I cheer for the U.S. when they're competing because this is the country I live in, no matter what. Um, and it ain't a whole lot of other places that you can say you want to go. There are a couple of places I'm thinking about, but I don't want to get too far on that. But it is a place I literally, at this point in my life, choose to live. And so it is what it is. But what I am excited about more than anything is the fact that uh, she was able to get the right people in our camp. And it's not just what you do on the track. It's not just physical. I tell people this all the time. This is what I do. It's not just what you can do physically. It's this. She got this right. She kept her swagger, which I like, because she she, she 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 showed up. But she, she showed up. She kept her swagger. Uh, you know, she, she kept her... And, and, and if you don't know anything about track and field, you can't be a short sprint person, anything 200 down, without a level of arrogance. You have to believe you're the best person on the track. You've got to have that. And then, obviously, it's a business, so showmanship uh, matters. Uh, that's what made Usain Bolt, out of just being a beast, what made Usain Bolt good. He was a great showman. He showed up. and He had the fans hype before and after every race. And so that's a part of the business now. You got to be that. But I see that in her. And hopefully she builds a solid, uh, long-standing career because she's young. She can she can literally challenge Shelly, uh, Fra Shelly Ann Frazier uh, Price as the most decorated female sprinter of all time. She can literally challenge her starting as early as she's starting. And uh, the difference is there are a lot of, there's a lot of up-and-coming talent that she's going to have to contend with. Uh, you know, when Shelly started, this whole 10-6 thing, that was a time nobody was coming close to that 10-4 that, 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 that uh, Florence Griffin, uh, John Oran. Uh, nobody was coming close to that. You know, that was like, okay, ain't nobody ever touched 10 6 5, 10, 5 I think Shelly and Frazier Price has hit a 10-5 something once. It's close. And so now when you start talking about we're in a new era, we're in a whole new era where the competition is faster. So Shelly Ann Frazier was the opening of this era. So when she opened up the era, it wasn't nobody that could get to her. Uh, on the flip side, Shakari is in, in, in the midst, in the middle of this era. And so it's a lot of heat coming from a lot of different places, just in the U.S. alone. I think Shadrika Jackson is still going to be uh, ongoing competition for her, especially at the 200. Uh, but there's a lot of talent in the U.S., a lot of ta talent in Britain, uh, that's the U.K. that she's going to have to contend with. But no matter what, man, I love to see our sisters competing at a high level, regardless of what country they are coming from. Um, and... Uh, I can't wait to actually see the race. I didn't get a chance to see the race because I was getting ready to leave, but I'm excited about it. Um, I really, truly uh, want to, on another note, challenge my people to become more engaged in getting beyond uh, sound bites. This is the back end of something, and I didn't do it on the front end because I don't lost you guys. I know how it goes, and it actually makes my point. We got to get past sound about it's too much going on. Suicide spike in single women, black men and young girls, young black girls and black men and black single women. Suicide spike. That's one thing. We got uh, a horrible, we got the worst divorce rate, which means broken homes, broken families, busted up children, adverse childhood experience, 
uh, uh, experiences, all the things that I've been talking to you about and sharing with you in these videos, we are going to have to want to do more than have sound bites. Sound bites will not give you what you need to win this war. You need to be educated. You need to be informed. You need to be connecting and doing strategic planning, setting up agendas. You can't do that with sound bites. You can't do that with memes. We need to be having educated discourses, dialogues, and discussions about what's happening in our communities and what we can do about it. We need to be talking about programs. Uh, we need to be talking about uh, strategies and agendas of how we're going to overcome these mechanisms and machinations that have been put in play against us purposely. We cannot sit up and win a fight just on some sound bites. Get hype about it, power to the people, and, and, and whatever from a sound bite. Yeah, man, can you believe this? Did you know this? And then that's it. Now, you need to do more than just know it. You need to be aware of it, understand how it's happening, why it's happening, and what can be done about it. You need to know how it functions so you know how to counter it. One of the biggest problems we have is we don't understand how things work. And as long as we don't understand how things work, we can never do anything to stop the things that are working against us. We can whine and complain, but that's not a plan. Man, uh, I learned this a long time ago. I was taught this by some of the greatest minds in, in, uh, in, in, in black history I was taught this and I'm trying to pass it on to you we need to think, we need to build we need to come up with solutions that's why I built Black Men Lead a rite of passage initiative for young black boys because I found out that that would literally reduce the violence, reduce uh, incarceration, reduce recidivism when they do become incarcerated and make them more uh, likely to develop skill sets that will earn them a living wage uh, that's just the bottom of it. That, that's the reason why I'm so heavily uh, invested in providing um, mental health wraparound services. Why? Because we've got black women are suffering from depression at a rate more than any other group. Least likely out of those groups to get help outside of black men. But black men aren't even reporting. We're just uh, internalizing and exploding. Black women are dying and if they're not dying because of suicide they're dying because of breast cancer not because of carcinogens not because of what they ate but because of stress induced genetic up uh up regulating of cancer genes i've talked about that i've shared that i've literally lectured on that in frankfurt germany look we man look we got a problem and it's not gonna be solved with sound bites. It's not gonna be solved with band-aids. It's gonna be solved by us coming together, us thinking, us, uh, us coming up with solutions, us connecting our minds and really truly building and creating something. We are an exceptional people, but we are going to have to operate at an exceptional level to overcome this deficit. And on that note, look, I'm gonna get out of here. Again, if you believe in the work we're doing, go in the description box, click the link and give. Uh, shout out to Shakari Richardson. Shout out to Shelly Ann Frazier. Uh, Sh uh, Shadrika Jackson got silver. Shelly Ann Frazier Price got bronze at 1072, 1077, respectfully. Uh, uh, Shakari won with 1065, uh, which is, I mean, pretty impressive. Uh, so, again, shout out to everyone. Again, shout out to Noah Lyles, who won 100, which is crazy. Everybody sees him as a 200 guy. He won 100. Uh, so U.S. is doing pretty good, um, but however it goes, man, I just love track and field, so I'm excited about it. I can't wait to get to where I can see some of it. But anyway, show some love, show some support for those who believe. The rest of you, thank you guys for dropping in. I'm about to get out of here, and then I will catch up with you guys a little bit later. Take care.